Alright, so a couple of days ago we showcased the new resurrected Bond Ichigo. Today's video we're here to focus more so on Uryu, and in a couple of days time, maybe tomorrow when I get around to doing it, we're gonna showcase Chad's new resurrection in Brave Battles. With that said though, this character's resurrection isn't bad by any means. It's actually quite an interesting one for the most part. For starters, his soul trait was originally a 12% strong attack recharge. Now with that, he has the addition that he can actually buff your character's strong attack damage by 60%. That goes for himself, increases his damage output by a tad bit. But most importantly, when it comes to resurrection characters, it is the link aspect. And it's actually a pretty good link. But having a look at the heart attribute as of right now, we now currently have six characters with the recharge and strong attack damage combo. That's actually quite good, especially when you consider the fact that we do have other links too that give recharge and also full stamina damage. It's always nice to have more options, especially a premium one, because for the most part, this is the first premium link in the game that has resurrected that offers you recharge and strong attack damage, but more recharge. Our previous one being this Tosh right here, but he's giving you more strong attack damage and less recharge. Usually when it comes to normal manual play, I don't use use links like this it's not bad by any means but i always prioritize having the most amount of recharge and anything else is a bonus so links like this that give less recharge but more sad they're not bad but personally they're not my cup of tea so while i wasn't really excited about his particular link i do actually like the fact that again it is the first in this attribute from the premium aspect that he does give you more recharge and also string attack damage you compare this with the nelly yell and also Ruka, for example to get 38 percent more recharge and 48 percent more strong attack damage at the same time you can also pair Uri use link with these three characters to gain extra bit more damage from the full stam strong attack damage you can really mix and match what you want to do in the heart attribute and it's thanks to links like this existing so sword trait aspect very good can't really complain about that as for his upgrade though he already had six skills so going into his resurrection he picked up one new skill and it actually ended up being 20 percent havoc which is 20 percent more range on his strong attacks so a small damage increase but a pretty noticeable range increase let's check out the character and see how he does perform Alright then, so jumping some single player IZ just to showcase what he used to be used in. He was actually a character that aged quite well and unfortunately fell off basically in the last year or two since we have been getting some really powerful characters. But considering that he came up five years ago, the fact that he has been relevant for like three or so years isn't really too bad. So his SA1 is going to be a pushback attack. It's an 18% magnification strong attack. Very similar to what we get nowadays on other characters. His SA2 is going to be a crawling vortex. Grips up the enemies, can use your string, not too bad. But the main use for this character has always been the SA3, and it's a very interesting one. So his SA3 right here, if we use it straight away, just an AoE in front of him. Nothing super crazy, but it's got very small range. It's very rare for a character to get a charge strong attack free and get that kind of poor type of range. But when you fully charge the strong attack free, it completely changes. Instead of an AoE in front of him, it's going to be a massive AoE around him like this. And as you can see, it didn't even kill the enemies that we touched at the back. And the reason for that is because it's a pushback type of attack. And it actually hits around 48 times with a very high magnification. So the idea with this SA3, this charge strong attack 3, the only of its type in here, you want to get up close personal, use it, and it essentially kills anyone that's close to him. But those that are far away don't really get damaged at all. So it's very similar to the shockwave SA2s that we have in some characters. But as an SA3, it made for an interesting choice of gameplay. Now, the reason why this was good was for epic rage content. There are many examples on YouTube right now where before we had all these powerful nukes that can just do ridiculous amount of damage on their soul bomb. Originally, we had this particular Uryu. The idea was to weaken the defense and then we would have like three or so other players with this Uryu, charge up your SA3, let it go, and you would rinse through the boss's HP in literal seconds. It's not really that good of an SA3 nowadays, but you know what? I actually wouldn't mind it returning for Epic Raid farmers. Since Epic Raid nowadays is all about farming Link Shot potions, it would be nice if we, you know, continue to get these characters designed for Epic Raid purposes, but actually get given that SA3 where it's actually useful. But using his Sobom, let's check it out. <laughs> Soul Bomb's kind of cool. Doesn't really have a really good selling pose that I could use for a thumbnail. But yeah, the overall story of this character is that he came out, he was okay, nothing super special. But in ever great content, he really did shine. He was one of the better new characters and slowly started to get a tad bit replaced as we started to get actual links or characters designed for epic grade content. But most importantly, hard hitting Soul Bombs. You know, Noel, Yamoto, for example. You might rather bring them instead of using someone like this Uryu. But going back into it though, let's see if we can actually clear a tad bit faster here. So I'm liking the usage of the SA1 into the 2. Sometimes I actually like using my SA3 on the enemies when they are trapped in a vortex, for example. Probably wasn't the best usage of that SA3. Lack of guard breaks definitely notable here, but we do not have killer. And again, we haven't really worked on him, to be fair. This is a character that is worth investing in just for the aspect of using him as a link. Again, recharge and also strong attack damage is actually really good here. As we mentioned, I am fortunate to have him 5-5, but 300 defense. 
and I haven't really used any summer tickets as of late, so I can't really, you know, reroll that six slot. But I definitely might look into doing that sometime in the future once I use all my summer tickets for the anniversary. But yeah, that SA3 uncharged is really not that good. The more the range collision this character does have, investing into him does make him do a tad bit more damage. And it definitely would be more impressive if he had SP level 10. But let's use our sub on him. I'm already to the final boss, not too- The Havoc has been definitely noticeable, especially with that SA3. Let's actually charge it up real quick and then demonstrate it against the Yachiru. So as you can see there, she's stopped still. And look at that. I believe I saw 97k. Maybe it was 9,700. I'm not too sure. But that's the whole idea with this character's SA3. If there's an enemy that is static, standing still, you want to get up close and personal, use that SA3 fully charged, and you're basically dropping a massive nuke. But to be fair, one of the main reasons why I was happy about this particular resurrection is that this is a character that you do actually use. A lot of times, a character gets resurrected, we don't really use them, so it doesn't really matter. In this case, though, he is a good link, but at the same time, you are kind of forced to use him in Chronicle Quest, where he is actually the best character for this quest because he does get you the extra drop bonus, but he also does do more damage. And in this case, I guess the more range that he does have is going to help him clear a tad bit faster. I think most of us that have been playing this game for a while, especially those that manual Chronicle Quest, you know, we kind of have like a layout on how to tackle this particular quest. And I'm noticing a definite speed increase here, thanks to the fact that we do have more range. Usually, I like to solve on this stage because it is quite big. The first three stages being very linear. You can go and use one, two, three strong attacks and pretty much clear it up. Let's go here. Let's use our soul bomb. There we go. Done. So him getting that range buff and also damage buff is definitely going to help you out for those that are just maybe autoing, manualing Chrono Quest, for example. I know it feels kind of weird showcasing a character in Chronicle Quest, but, you know, we have been using it for years, so to see him get an upgrade to help you clear this particular quest a tad bit faster isn't really too bad. And currently, right now, we do have two times Chronicle Quest, so if you haven't already started from the Chronicle Quest, now would be a great time to do so. And for those that have this Uru, you're going to go for it even faster, which might be another reason why you might want to invest into this particular character in terms of Link's levels, just to get through his quest even faster, right? Let me actually go here and use my sob bomb here, trying a different strategy. I don't normally do this. We're experimenting here. It might not be the best thing to do, but we'll see how it goes. So SA2 there, use my Nat I do actually like his Nat to be fair. And then let's use our SA3. Are we able to get everyone here? I don't think we will be able to. And we kind of were, to be fair. That one's too bad. And we're in the final room. Is this going to be faster? I don't know. We'll find out. Let's grab that soul bomb. There we go. Boom. And yeah, that was our fastest ever run. I did use to manually play Chronicle West back in the day. So yeah, I guess that's something. The resurrection saved me maybe a couple seconds. If I'm trying to mass speed run these links, so if I'm trying to mass speed run these fragments, Uryu's resurrection does technically help out. So with that said, lads, that was the video for today. Trying out the Uryu. Also talking about him and how he used to be usable back in the day for those that maybe missed out on that Uryu arc. This was a special character for a lot of players. And I'm pretty happy with his resurrection. Good link. Can't really ask for more. And also is a tad bit better with the Havoc. And that's important though because it is noticeable. And you do actually use this character on a monthly basis when farming Chronicle Quests. So I would say it's a pretty good resurrection. Really can't complain about it. Don't really have anything negative to say about him. But in the comments below, let me know how you let's feel about this resurrection. 